My name is Shane West. I'm here to talk to you about something that is quite often in our minds, whether in a good or a bad way, and that is healthcare, specifically healthcare insurance. Healthcare is considered an atypical market, meaning that it has consumer, producers, and a large segment of payers. Without further ado, I present to you my tribe talk, Healthcare Reform, a Big Problem in America. Uh, this is a rundown of our agenda. Uh, I will provide an introduction of what healthcare is. I'll propose some solutions in my approach that I believe would be very successful. I'll also discuss how technology and IT can help and what's next. On March 23, 2010, the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, better known as Obamacare, was signed into law by President Obama. From there, it has presented several challenges, which has cost the American taxpayers millions of dollars and raised health care premiums for the majority of Americans. We as Americans do benefit from some of the best medical care in the world. However, our health care system is one that is very costly, inefficient, and very confusing. The ACA fails to address the fundamental problems that plague our health care system, and it has seemed to make some problems worse than what they once were. Uh, the ACA also portrays a model of centralized top-down government management, and this type of model is unworkable, unaffordable, unfair, and unpopular with the majority of Americans. So what is healthcare? As you can see here, it's very, very complex. Many politicians and voting citizens would like to see Obamacare repealed and replaced. My argument is not to fully repeal Obamacare, but to revise and modify certain aspects of it. I'm here to talk about the things from Obamacare that we should keep and those that where I feel a change is needed. First, let's look at some of the good things about Obamacare. I like to call this Healthcare Reform 2.0. First, the things we should keep. Obamacare does not allow any discrimination based on your gender. It also does not allow insurance companies to take coverage away from sick people, nor does it allow insurance companies to deny Americans that already have pre-existing conditions. And it also mandates that insurance companies must justify an increase in premiums for the consumer. So some things that we should change. Uh, first, it pushes a tax penalty mandate on Americans that will fine you if you don't carry health care coverage. This is a direct violation of our First Amendment rights. Second, it has all Americans paying for coverage whether they need it or not, or even use it. For instance, we're all paying for free preventive care, uh, such as mammograms, birth control, maternity care, prostate exams. Now, I don't know about you, but why is a man paying for birth control or maternity? And on the flip side, why are women paying for prostate exams? Hello, you don't even have prostates. Uh, another thing it does is it raises premiums of the majority of Americans. From the start of Obamacare being signed into law, premiums and deductibles have skyrocketed throughout the nation. I'll probably provide some examples of this shortly. Uh, next is prescription drugs. Did you know that from 2013 to 2014, prescription drug spending accelerated from 2.5% to 12.6% and has continued to grow um, since then. Drug costs have risen dramatically for hardworking families and for our senior citizens. Finally, the ACA raised uh, the income tax rate for individuals that made over $200,000 per year and couples that made over $250,000. So what the problem I have with this is if you went to college, you studied your butt off, graduated, went on to obtain a graduate degree, got that great job, moved yourself up the ranks, and just became a very uh, successful individual, why are you being penalized with an extra income tax uh, increase just because you became successful? So I'd like to tell you a little story. Uh, insurance premiums have been one of the sole disapprovals of the ACA since it was implemented. Uh, now I used to be a health and life insurance agent. Uh, the company I worked for was private and it offered plans uh, to consumers that met what the insured needed, not uh, the extra requirements that came into play with Obamacare. Uh, re this uh, coverage plan actually reduced premiums significantly. Uh, since they only covered hospital expenses for major issues, they did not pay for free preventive care such as physicals, mammograms, etc. Um, now in 2015, we did a study 
Uh, the average across America for a man for a physical was $100, and for women was approximately $150. So the thought process here was if we can reduce your premiums to a certain amount, does that really, does that $150 really matter in the uh, long run of things if it can save you $500 plus dollars a month uh, on your premiums? So an example that I give is this family that I helped in North Carolina. So it's a family of four, husband, wife, and two kids. Pre-Obamacare, they were paying approximately $500 a month for their uh, health care coverage. Post-Obamacare, it rose to over $1,600 a month uh, in their premiums. This equated to approximately $13,200, which is a 220% increase from their premiums pre-Obamacare. And this is just one example. So next I'd like to talk to you about cost drivers. Uh, some of the cost drivers that increase uh, the cost of health care and health care insurance are aggregate national demographic and economic factors, individual and society determinants, and health system factors. Let's look at demographics first. Uh, the higher national income can be associated with higher health spending. Now as we age, health care costs and insurance does go up. Nowadays we do have an increased uh, life expectancy and longevity. Uh, this can be attributed to employers offering incentives for living a healthy lifestyle. It could be uh, new fad diets and exercises, or it could even be that you know yummy kale smoothie that you get on a daily or weekly basis. So as we continue to age, this can drive up costs, uh, especially as we do reach uh, older ages. Next would be gen or me, next is gender. Uh, it's also a big cost driver. Men and women will experience different health care costs throughout their lifetime. Uh, over 400 employees were surveyed and they reported increased costs for spending uh, by adding a spouse onto the company's uh, insurance. Now more than half of these employees actually stated that they did increase premiums, um, you know, approximately 56% and they were expecting another 25% by 2018. Now an example that I can give personally when I was unemployed, I was on my wife's health care insurance. Our insurance went up an extra $700 a month because I was added on to her coverage plan. Now, I actually work for the same company, and that $700 has been reduced down to $52 a month for my individual coverage. That's a $650 savings. One of the other things is the supply chain. Supply side issues are a big cost driver as well. Uh, the overall supply of health professionals, largely physicians, and hospital growth contribute uh, very much to the high level in healthcare spending. Although wonderful, developing technology is also a significant contributor to the high level in uh, high level of spending in healthcare. Other cost drivers are systematic issues such as marketplace structures, regulation issues, quality and safety. Uh, compliance and uh, malpractice litigation issues. One of the biggest cost drivers is prescription drugs. The drug development and discovery process is lengthy uh, and very costly. It takes approximately 14 years to take a drug from basic research to a market launch for a successful uh, product. There's also a very high failure rate. Uh, approximately 8 per only 8% of the drugs that are, are sent to the FDA actually get approved. In the year 2000, the cost of clinical trials alone ranged from 15.2 million to 86.3 million, and an estimated 4.4 billion drug prescriptions were dispensed in the United States. There are approximately 60,000 pharmacies in the nation, uh, 38,000 of which are retail chains such as CVS, Walgreens, and Walmart. And of those three, they uh, generated more than $270 billion in revenue. They equates to approximately 74% of the retail uh, chain revenue. One thing I wanted to show you is the per capita spending on prescription pharmaceuticals. As you can see here, the United States is leading the pack with almost $900 billion in per capita spending. The example to the right is the average drug prices for top selling drugs uh, in 2015, and it, it uh, compared it to several countries. As you can see here in the United States, for non-discounted rates for 
Humera was $3,400. Compare that to Canada or even France at $981. Now that's a significant inflation increase that our country is putting on prescription drugs. So I have several recommendations or solutions to the problem that I, uh, with the current healthcare system. For one, uh, a, the solution to the healthcare, healthcare debacle is very simple. Let's keep Obamacare on the table, but just make some modifications to it. First, we need to get rid of that awful mandate that requires you to have insurance or pay a penalty. Uh, not only does it violate our rights, but a lot of people actually elect to pay the penalty. In fact, in 2012, approximately 4 million Americans uh, elected to pay the tax rather than purchase coverage. The Congressional Budget Office actually estimated this was approximately $54 billion in taxes that were paid. Another solution would be to encourage personal ownership of health care by reforming the tax treatment of employer health care. So basically what this means is there's a tax exclusion that is given to employers for offering uh, health care coverage to their employees. The uh, problem with this, it is unlimited, it obscures the true cost of care, and it actually drives up consumption. Uh, this, uh, with Obamacare, it actually just simply imposed a, uh, a tax on the health plans once they exceeded a certain amount. But it neglected to truly reform the uh, tax treatment. So by actually taking this away and giving it back to the individual, uh, individuals can receive tax relief uh, for themselves, their families, uh, for purchasing health care plans of their choosing, not what specifically their company is offering. Uh, this would also make the healthcare system more simple, more fair, and more neutral uh, on how, how and where an individual can obtain their coverage. A third recommendation would be to get rid of the free preventive care clause. Now mind you, I'm not totally against it. Uh, I'm not saying get rid of it altogether, but we should definitely get rid of certain aspects of it. Uh, an example I gave earlier, men having to pay for maternity and birth control. Another thing I would change would be the lower drug costs. By eliminating co-pays for generic medications and increasing co-pays for brand name medications, it is estimated that approximately $17 billion in federal spending would be saved over the course of 10 years. Uh, looking at the, uh, the picture here, you can see the manufacturers at the top. As you go down, kickbacks are sent all the way back up to the manufacturer, who is the main source or main individual that is reaping the big results of prescription drugs. One more thing that I would definitely like to change uh, would be the increased income tax for Americans that make over a certain amount. Like I said earlier, you should not be penalized for being successful and uh, making a good living. Trust me when I say Uncle Sam's definitely going to get his money. So let's move on to how IT can help. So the Information Systems Strategy Triangle uh, highlights the alignment necessary between decisions uh, regarding the business strategy, the information systems, and organizational design, and how they integrate within each other. As reform continues to force hospitals and doctors to find new ways to increase effectiveness while cutting costs, many of the supplies and processes that are in place are needed to keep the business moving forward. They tend to actually be overlooked. Uh, the supply chain is actually considered the second largest expense and fastest growing expense for healthcare providers. Uh, it's estimated that over $5 billion is lost annually due to fraud, waste, and abuse. By using technology in unison with the supply chain, specifically Lean, uh, it can help create a better end to end visibility on supplies, devices, and products that are being used in healthcare. The bottom line this wicked problem has two uh, major distinct problems. First off, it is a need to control costs uh, in the healthcare industry. And second is for the political arena to make a significant change in the governance of the healthcare system. These problems are twofold, as one may impact the other. Uh, this wicked problem is also one that, in all fairness, will never be solved. There's no perfect solution that will benefit and make everyone in the nation happy. The American Healthcare Association actually has good data about spending costs that hospitals face. This is a great starting place to delve into big data and actually see what hospitals are spending. One of the things I'm actually doing for VCU as a project manager is helping work streams allocate expenses, increase revenues, and reduce healthcare costs. Um, we've actually got a set target across the entire enterprise 
to save approximately $106 million over the course of this next fiscal year. This is just one example of lowering costs for healthcare. If others continue to follow suit, whether it be hospitals, drug companies, or insurance companies, using technology to our advantage, we can find better health care for Americans at a lower cost. So I want to leave you with a funny quote that Jay Leno said on his uh, evening show uh, when Obamacare was first erected. Whatever our government officials attempt to do, whether it's repeal or replace or even both, uh, this needs to become a bipartisan agreement that will help the majority of Americans, not just one class of individuals. So this concludes my tribe talk uh, for the evening. I encourage you to look out for my next tribe talk while we'll break down Medicare and Medicaid. Until then, go in peace and good night.